Yes, people, what is happening? Welcome back to Lily White Lane. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing okay. And today, I'm going to be bringing you your combined 11 for Tottenham Hotspurs clash with Manchester City this Sunday, live from Wembley in the Carabao Cup final. But before we get into the video, make sure if you're new here to smash that subscribe button, hit that like button as hard as you possibly can, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss an up from the content. So I think you can expect to see all kinds of Tottenham Hotspur content, whether it be match previews, match reviews, player ratings, predicted lineups, Tottenham updates, transfer updates, top five lists, unbiased Premier League shows, debriefs and day after shows after every single Tottenham Hotspur game and fixture, the whole shebang. So make sure to smash that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your combined 11 for Tottenham Hotspur's clash against Manchester City this Sunday, live in the Carabao Cup final from Wembley on Sky Sports. An absolutely massive game. If you haven't already, before you uh, before you watch this video, check out my match preview. I say my Switch match, uh, match preview when I did a quick match preview for this game. I say going through some of the talking points about Kane's injury, talking about how big of a game this is for Tottenham Hotspur. Just go and check it out if you haven't already. But if you are here, if you have already seen that video, welcome to your Combined 11, I say. Now look, I'm not going to put uh, random players into positions they don't play, and I'm going to try and keep it as realistic as possible if both teams did combine to make an 11. And yeah, this would be my combined 11 for Tottenham Hotspur versus Manchester City, as I say. So we'll start things off in goal. It's between Edison and Hugo Lloris, right? Who gets into that goalkeeper uh, position? Now, I absolutely adore Hugo Lloris. I think he's a phenomenal player. I think he's fantastic. He's a brilliant goalkeeper, a brilliant shot stopper, fantastic in goal, as I say. You know, he has it all. He's a World Cup winning captain. But I don't think he's as good as a sweeper keeper as Edison. And you look at Edison and you see the guy is absolute class. And the guy is such a good sweeper keeper. He comes off his line so often as well to clear the ball. Brilliant. And he's so precise with his passing from goal as well. You see a lot of goalkeepers kicking the ball out as then it lands at the opposition player's feet. But every single time he kicks that ball out, I know it's Manchester City, but it always seems to land at a City player's feet. The guy's phenomenal. And as much as I love Hugo Lloris, he doesn't have the quality that Edison does in my mind. It's, you know, it's definitely a tough, uh, it's definitely a tough one in goal. As I say, before I've had, have ones like Hugo Lloris versus De Gea, Hugo gets in over that in that combined 11. You've had Hugo versus Leno, Hugo gets in. But against Edison, in my opinion, he doesn't get in. I think Edison's a class goalkeeper. So, Edison in goal in this combined 11. That takes us on to our uh, two centre-halves. No Spurs players in our centre-back partnership, as it sounds. It would have to be Diaz and Stones, in my opinion. Now, you look at our centre-halves. Dyer over the past few weeks has been good, but is he consistent? No, and I don't think he's nowhere near the level of Stones and Diaz. Alderweire is our only good shout, but he's not up to match fitness, in my opinion, right now. I don't think he's as good as he, uh, good as he was before, and he's ageing, obviously. So... As our uh, centre-back partnership, it has to be Diaz and Stones, in my opinion. Two absolute class players, John, Stone, uh, uh, John Stones and Ruben Diaz. Because I think, look, you look at those two players and you see Diaz, absolutely incredible. He's, he, he's such a defensive rock, you know. Gandalf, he's like Gandalf, the footballing version of Gandalf. He doesn't let anyone get past him. The guy's such a defensive rock. I think he puts in some fantastic challenges, always positionally aware. And John Stones over the past few weeks. Now, John Stones, right? You would have said this to me about a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. I said, Laporte gets in way over John Stones. But John Stones has really impressed me. I say he's been so good defensively, he's putting in some fantastic blocks. And the guy puts the ball into the back of the net quite often, I say, and not his own net. You know, he's really, really good in the air, I say, and puts the ball into the back of the net quite a bit. He's got a few goals on his tally. So it's our centre-back partnership in this combined 11. It has to be Diaz and Stones for me, right? That takes us on to our left-back position now. This one was quite tough. This one was quite tough. But in my opinion, it has to be Regulon, right? I think Regulon's class. You have Cancelo, but I think I'll save him for the right-back position. So, as I say, Regulon in that left-back position, I think the guy's class. He's so direct. Some of his runs uh, from zone 12 to uh, to zone 17 are absolutely incredible. I think he's he, he's such a good crossover left-back. As I say, he can play left-wing-back when he needs them to. He can sit back more. In my opinion, he's better as more of an attacking player, you know. He's more suited to that wing-back position than actually being a left-back because he presses high so, so well. So he gets into that left-back position for me. And in that right-back position, it's between Cancelo 
Walker and Aurier. Aurier gets ruled out straight away, in my opinion. Walker's definitely up there because he's one of our own. But it has to be Cancelo. The guy's absolutely class. I think he's phenomenal. I do think he's better than Walker. Hence the fact he get, uh, gets in a lot more than him. And sometimes Cancelo can take that left-back position. It goes to show, you know, they're, they're, there's so much class in that Manchester City side. It's almost like... When you go onto FIFA cheat mode and you give yourselves uh, and 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 you give yourself five hundred thousand um five hundred thousand million as I say to spend in FIFA career mode, it's almost like what City get, you know. Just basically, this team needs improvement. We didn't win something this year, you know. Just just, just bundle in another hundred and fifty million, then spend that on some good players, and then you'll win everything next season. It's the way City roll, as I say. And uh, look. In my opinion, they are so, so good. They've got so many class players. Some say they're a Royal Club. I can agree with that. I do think they're built off money. But at the end of the day, you look at their team and, you know, everyone thought this season was going to be so unpredictable. And it goes to show they've got so many options. Whilst everyone else is feeling fatigued from the tough uh, schedule, see, they've got so many options. I say, hence the fact they're going to go on to win the Premier League, maybe the Champions League, um, and maybe the Carabao Cup. But obviously, Chelsea stopped them winning the quadruple. And I do think, <laughs> I need to get back on track, but I will just finish this quickly. And look, a lot of Manchester City fans do say this team is one of the greatest ever. I really don't think so. I really don't think it's one of the greatest ever. It's just a team that's capitalised with the amount of class they have in their team from the investment in the club in a season where all the other teams who haven't had that investment because of obviously COVID, you know, that lack of investment has come to cost them. And players who are constantly playing are feeling a lot of fatigue and getting injured, right? City didn't have to deal with that. And, you know, they, 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 they have kind of taken over football. They've kind of bought the Premier League, in my opinion. And this season, they are going to go on to win it. But as I say, whoever thought this season was unpredictable, inclu including me, I was wrong by a long shot. I should have noticed. I should have seen that City were obviously going to win the league this season. And look, fair play to them. But hopefully, we can stop them in the Carabao Cup final. Anyway, I say... Right back position, Cancelo. Left back position, Regulon. In goal, Edison. I saw two centre halves, Diaz and Stones. Right, only one Spurs player in so far. Obviously, my formation that I am going to go with is four five one because I do think there's a lot of uh, a lot of talent in that midfield for both sides. So, as our three centre mids, I've chosen Gundogan, I've chosen De Bruyne, and I've chosen Foden. Right, I think all three are absolutely class. Gundogan's been one that's really popped up this season, one that's really impressed me. A player who hasn't been that good um, over the past few years has just come into the City side this season and been absolute class. His finishing's been on point. He's been clinical on goal. Fair play to him. De Bruyne is Kevin De Bruyne. Some are saying this season isn't the greatest for him, although it's been an incredible season. KDB is class, you know. Whatever you want to say about De Bruyne, whatever your thoughts are about him, the guy's absolutely class. He's so precise on passing. And he's the reason that this Manchester City tick attack of football does work. Because, you know, he's the centrepiece of it. And I do think he's a class player. Hence the fact that he gets into this. And Foden, as I say, you know, very similar to John Stones. If you would have said Foden one year ago, I probably wouldn't know who he was. Because he was just coming through, as I say. And I'd be like, how does Foden get in? You know, how does Foden get in over the likes of Mora and Ndombele and all this? The guy's been incredible this season, right? absolutely phenomenal i think he's been brilliant he's got such clinical finishing even over the past few weeks and in those two dortmund legs in my opinion he was the reason they went through he was fantastic so Foden gets in there in my opinion then you've got the left wing on the right wing and now i understand that raheem sterling is more of a left winger but he can play in that right wing position you look at city's uh city's right wingers mares is their decent player i do like mares but i don't think he's better than sterling then you look at the whole landscape things and Sterling's former position uh, was right wing. Now he's more of a left winger. But in my opinion, in this combined 11, you can put him into that right wing position. So I'll have Sterling in that right wing position. He hasn't really impressed me that much this season, but we all know the guy's got so much pace. He's absolute class. So Sterling gets in there. And then left wing and up top left wing. You know, it was tough because obviously I was thinking of Sterling originally. And then you've got other players in there as well. But it has to be Sun for me. It has to be Sonaldo. Obviously, without a doubt. And then up top, Jesus, Aguero, no match. No match whatsoever for Harry Kane, in my opinion. Even Torres, no match whatsoever. Kane gets in up top. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Combined 11. Thank you all for watching. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Hit that like button, as I say. Tap the notification bell if you are subscribed. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing with your life? Subscribe, as I say. You can expect to see 
all kinds of Spurs content, everything you could possibly ask for from a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Show. And uh, yeah, this has been a video, guys. Thank you for watching. Massive game tomorrow. Looking forward to watching it. Comment down below what you guys think about tomorrow's game. Are you confident? Are you stressed? Let me know. I want to hear all your thoughts about this combined 11. I want you to comment your combined 11 and tell me how you are feeling about tomorrow. Thank you for watching. And as always, come on, you lily whites.